Hello and welcome back to Rares Gaming, my name is Hollow and today we have another set of things you didn't know in Elden Ring, this time focusing on some minor, minute details, some interesting weird bugs and interactions between equipment and intended things that are so underused and underknown that I have never seen them before, we're completely unaware of them. As always, a huge thank you to you guys in the comments getting involved, making these suggestions, giving me a back and forth, but with all that said, let's get into the episode. To begin the video then, we're talking about the Mimic's Veil and a weird interaction between this and a certain armor piece. This is the Mimic's Veil that Godric used to escape the riots of Lindell. That transforms the user into something else. Apparently he hid among the women folk. I hid among the... What is this? An ice shard folk? What you can do is move around and this has been a thing in the Soul series in general. Now it's a specific item or tool. It used to be a sorcery. Uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty funny. Especially in PvP when you're hiding as the host. But apparently there's a really weird interaction, a bug, when you equip the black knife armor. This is a unique armor piece as well because what it does is it muffles the sound of footsteps. Well, when I equip it, um, I think it does the opposite of conceal would you say i'm still like slow moving around i'm still wearing the veil technically if i was to walk up to an enemy i would still have that sort of extra space of doubt because i'm a strange object moving around rather than a visible enemy but yeah when you break the veil by running or rolling the same thing happens if I were to use the veil while I've got the chest piece currently equipped, it does not bug. It's only when I move that I suddenly spring back to this weird existence and uh, yeah, clearly an unintended uh, overwriting of a visual effect that seems to be occurring here. Kind of a weird one, kind of interesting, just a small detail. For our next detail, it's to do with a certain Serpent Hunter and everyone's favorite Rikard. As we know, the Great Spear, the Great Serpent Hunter, uh, that gets that wind magic when you enter the arena and fight in that specific place. As it turns out, there's actually a way to power stance them for a new moveset that does work with that magic. I was told this in a few comments in earlier episodes, but after testing, I found that I couldn't get a second Serpent Hunter without certain bugs and glitches. However, it turns out you can still get that special effect even if you only have one Serpent Hunter by power sensing a second great spear. This triggers a new moveset using this enhanced hunter moveset. For some reason, it also seems that you'll do more damage if the serpent hunter is actually in your offhand rather than your main hand. But that means there's no longer the cool VFX of the serpent hunter for whatever reason. Still, it's very cool you can do this as a variation on the fight and the weird fact that you can do more damage if you have it in your offhand. So yeah, give this a try the next time you fight him, maybe a new game plus like I am here. It's a pretty cool mix up and different play style for the fight. Now recently I've been covering a couple of topics with builds and in this series as well with interesting interactions between weapons. Incantations like Black Flame Blade there applying to Ashes of War in unexpected ways. Well on that note Nova King in the comments let us know about the Great Stars and the Butchering Knife. You see the Great Stars here has a literal description that says landing attacks will slightly restore HP. Just like the Sacred Butchering Knife which says restores a small amount of HP when it's squarely struck an enemy. So when you attack with these weapons, of course, you're going to get lifesteal. But what it doesn't say is how that it also works on your Ash of War. So I'm back once again with my friendly test dummies, taking a bit of damage. I've got half health. And as you can see, the Golden Land Ash of War, which turns my, my attack into ranged holy projectiles, those are also healing me. Whether it's on the actual slam of the Ash of War or the ticks of the missiles, I'm getting that healing effect with this specific weapon, which makes it even better as you can see. It's also cool that with certain enemies, like say the giants here, you can snipe them in the head and stagger them. Another extra impressive detail to do with Golden Land here. As you can see with the blade, we have the same Ash of War, and of course the missiles, they're healing us in the same way. It's interesting, it says like a very small amount of health with this weapon specifically, but it seems to be the same healing as the Great Stars as far as I can see. So we can choose these two weapons and weaponize their ranged capacity to lifesteal in interesting ways. Of course it also works on other Ashes of War, be it melee ones. We've shown that before uh, with the Great Stars in particular, but the fact that you can get some ranged healing and modify your Ash of War further than what it's supposed to be able to do, it's really cool and something I'm still learning more about, uh, maybe making different builds with. Next up, I have a list of weird and interesting equipment details that I didn't know until I did some research today. Starting with what I'm wearing right now, the Guardian's outfit. Apparently, there is a unique, specific chess piece found on only one enemy type in the entire game. 
the Guardians, right? But it's not this chest piece. What I'm wearing is the regular Guardian garb. These are the protectors of the Minor Erd Tree, the guys that have those awesome Guardian sword spears. There's actually a second chest piece, like I said, totally unique. The Guardian garb full bloom, which can only be found here at the specific part of the story before you do what you do to Lindell. It's those flower or blooming guardians that are on the roots of the Erd Tree as you go up to the Erd Tree Sanctuary. These guys will drop that chest piece, a really small percent drop, which is probably why I've never seen it before. Only these enemies with a tiny odds to actually drop it. Anyway, looking at the description, it has a unique effect that I can find on no other armor piece. It raises the health recovery of your flask of Crimson Tears. That is, of course, your heal, right? So this is actually increasing the power of your heal. That's kind of a major detail, and it's also a really weird but kind of cool and unique chest piece in general, but there's a huge downside to the fact that you're getting better heals. It's the fact that it greatly lowers fire damage negation. There are some great scorpion charms, these talismans that are very powerful, raises holy attack but lowers dam damage negation. The downside of lowering your damage negation makes them basically unusable, a really bad idea in PvP. You simply take too much extra damage well, this greatly lowers fire damage negation. So wearing this is a really bad idea against anyone using fire, whether that's in PvP or mobs in PvE. Next on our equipment showcase today, we're going to look at a couple of shields. Not this one, this one is incredibly bland. Firstly, we have the Spiral Horn Shield, which when you equip it, gives you a bunch of things at once. This is 50 levels of immunities, robustness, and focus the moment you simply equip this tiny little shield. What's incredible about that is the fact that it only weighs two, so you could put this on and not really worry about it and benefit from all of those boosts. It says in the description that the effect is only slight, but we are talking again, 50 levels on immunity, robustness, and focus. That's a lot. That is certainly not slight. And what you could do is just put it on your back and get that benefit, get those immunities, for example, if you're dealing with a status area and not actually have to be using it directly since it only weighs a small amount, right? You can get those benefits. Much the same with the other shield I'm going to show you. The Great Turtle Shell is another that has some seriously powerful passive effects. This one is a symbol of tirelessness, boosting your stamina recovery speed, which was actually one of the best shields you could possibly run in, say, Dark Souls 1 back in the day, because stamina recovery is a major aspect, and it seems to be a thing with turtles in Elden Ring. Whether it's that you're eating the meat or using the green turtle talisman, one of the best options in the game, thanks to its incredible stamina recovery. But thanks to the shield, you do not need to give up a talisman slot to get that same effect and get that faster recovery on your stamina. Just like the other shield, you can two-hand a weapon and have it on your back and still get that benefit as well as you becoming a sort of turtle cosplay. This could free up the potential of not running that talisman slot and just having the shield on your back like so. Now the shield is a bit heavier than the other one. It is 5.5 weight, but if you were running a colossal build, chances are you've got good endurance anyway to run something like this. So it's definitely an option and one that I never really thought about. Now let's talk about a series of unique weapons that have very strange special attacks. This is something I've shown in the series here and there with one or two weapons, and people have left quite a lot of comments suggesting different weapons that have unique unique attacks. The thing is, sadly, a lot of these unique weapons with these unique attacks, they're often not that good, especially not PvP meta or great PvE endgame DPS potential either. So you just don't see them. Starting with a lore relevant one then, we have the Flowing Curved Sword, which has this incredible special heavy attack where you're doing the spin around that goes quite long and has some big twirls at the end. It's seriously long and very flowy and cool, but this is actually a lore relevant thing. It speaks of a master of the sword garbed in blue and his curved blade that was patterned like flowing water. This special attack may actually be familiar if you've, uh, I don't know, played the game ever and fought a certain everyone's favorite boss, Melania. Because if I were to do the waterfowl dance, while obviously not exactly the same, there are some serious similarities between the two. The teacher of Melania, the master, was a swordsman garbed in blue. There's even a talisman that further references this, the Blue Dancer charm, which says the Blue Dancer represents a fairy who in legend bestowed a flowing sword upon a blind swordsman, aka Melania. Blade in hand, the swordsman sealed away an ancient god, that would be the outer god of rot, a god that was rot itself, it further says. So this master and the sword in general is heavily tied to Melania, and it clearly inspired that horrible ash of war known as the waterfowl dance. And as cool as this weapon is, it's basically never used. It's not really used in many PvE builds, and it's certainly not something I've ever seen in PvP. That is really sad. Compared to that, 
we have a really cool weapon. This is the Mantis Blade, which is a curved sword, one of the best weapon types for general roll catching when used in power stance. But this weapon, it has a unique heavy attack. You can see in its design that it's almost shaped strangely, and that is because it is actually a transforming weapon and the longest curved sword in the game due to that heavy. What happens is the blade transforms, extending its range so that you can actually attack from further with this curved sword. Much like a mantis arm sort of swinging out, it makes sense based on the name. This is the most Bloodborne-esque transforming weapon that's in the game, and it's a shame that we don't see this effect a little bit more. Maybe if we were to power stance two of them, it getting a unique moveset where it extends its attacks, and that could be really cool in PvP. Sadly, it's only on the heavy, which means it can only be used when two-handed like this in a relevant way. Here's a sadly basically never used one, this really cool designed mace, which comes under the really underused weapon type, the hammer. Not the great hammer, but the small hammers. Coming, as it says, with a unique strong attack that rouses fiery competitive spirit. In its design, it literally looks like a flame on a stick, which is really cool. And you see that the fire monks that this comes from channel their powers into it, literally lighting it on fire and attacking with explosive fury. For us, when we use the heavy attack, something similar happens, but much lamer. <laughs> you literally stomp your foot not once but twice and then do a slam down. This is a very unique attack because it's literally not seen anywhere else. I've never seen this attack otherwise, but it's basically just a normal heavy attack. It doesn't do like any crazy damage. It doesn't enhance your fire or something like that. It'd be much cooler if when you were stamping, it lit the hammer on fire, maybe doing an explosion at the end of it or something, maybe working with pyromancy in a unique way. But no, it's just an underloved strange weapon with a unique heavy and a very unique design. One that I've literally once again never seen in any content. Just another example of how disappointing hammers are in Elden Ring. Hopefully they see some buffs or maybe some relevant options in a DLC. How about an even more unique one? This hideous looking halberd is a dragon based one literally called the Dragon Halberd. And its description from a Dragonkin soldier, the Lightning and Frost types, says that this, like the dragon, is in wreath with both ice and lightning. But it doesn't have a special heavy, it just does a normal halberd spin. No special attacks, just normal pokes. It is just a kind of standard halberd with a, yeah, interesting design, but quite an ugly one in my opinion. However, its special effect actually comes as part of the Ash of the War, which strikes lightning and then attacks with ice and lightning in the same attack, which is much cooler because it also charges up the attack and now for a little while it's buffed up with this special effect. Further, if you follow up the special attack with another one, it'll do that downward slam in lightning and frost and even jump out a little bit in sort of a storm cloud, like so. The fact that it's got a double effect of lightning and ice built into it is very unique. There's only a couple weapons that have like a multi effect like that in the entire game. And this is one that's just never used or talked about. There you go. So we got the frost proc there. So now that it's reduced stamina, it's also taking more damage. And obviously we have the lightning damage, just part of the kit. Really cool, really underused. And I am wondering whether we could make this work in a build somehow. Halberds are also not an amazing weapon type in general, though there are some standout ones like the Knight Rider's Glaive. But there you have it. That is today's things you didn't know in Elden Ring. This one being an equipment focused one with strange interactions, unexpected descriptions, extra healing on armor, or all those special and unique attacks from very underloved and underused weapons that I'd never seen before. I quite enjoyed doing that research and looking into it because if I hadn't, I never would have seen this stuff. Again, no one uses this in PvP, and that's basically the only place I would see it in game from my normal gameplay. Are there other unique armor effects, statuses, and details to do with weapons and equipment that you know about? Let me know in the comments. For now though, if you've liked the video, please drop a like, it really helps us out. But until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching, see you in the next one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye